read a, a few sections from a, a longer translation uh, from Aztec. I have not read in a long time. Uh, called the, the Flight of Quetzalcoatl. Uh, and it's... Uh, uh, I mean, I, looking back at it, it's probably a lot of recomposition, you know, but it's, uh, it's, it's essentially what comes to me through uh, Mexican-Spanish translators uh, like um, uh, Garibay and others. Uh, the flight of Quetzalcoatl, uh, he becomes old. And this is the first time I've read it. You know, when, I, <laughs> when some others of us have become old, you know, for Quetzalcoatl, um, you know, it, it, was, it was terrifying. He saw his face in the mirror, you know, and, and, and this caused him uh, to have to leave where he was and to go in search of uh, what would cure him uh, of uh, that terrible distortion you know, of, of his face. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I look at you folks. <laughs> then the time came for Quetzalcoatl too, when he felt the darkness twist in him like a river, as though it meant to weigh him down, and he thought to go then, to leave the city as he had found it, and to go, forgetting there ever was a Tula, which was what he later did, as people tell it who still speak about the fire, how he first ignited the gold and the silver houses, their walls speckled with red shells, and the other Toltec arts, the creations of man's hands and the imagination of his heart, and hid the best of them in secret places, deep in the earth, in mountains or down gullies, buried them, took the cacao trees, and changed them into thorned acacias, and the birds he'd brought there years before that had the richly colored feathers and whose breasts were like living fire, he sent ahead of him to trace the highway he would follow toward the sea coast. When that was over, he started down the road. A whole day's journey reached the juncture of the tree, so-called fat prominence of bark, sky branches. I sat beneath it, saw my face cracked mirror, an old man and named it Tree of Old Age, thus to name it to raise stones, to wound the bark with stones, to batter it with stones, the stones to cut the bark, to fester in the bark. Tree of Old Age, stone patterns starting from the roots, they reach the highest leaves. <coughs> The next day, gone with walking, flutes were sounding in his ears, companions' voices. He squatted on a rock to rest. He leaned his hands against the rock, Tula shining in the distance, which he saw. He saw it and began to cry. He cried. The cold sobs cut his throat, a double thread of tears, a hailstorm beating down his face. The drops burnt through the rock. The drops of sorrow fall against the stone and pierce its heart. And where his hands had rested, shadows lingered on the rock, as if his hands had pressed soft clay, as if the rock were clay. The mark, too, of his buttocks in the rock, embedded there forever, a place named Tamakpolko. There is a peak between Old Smoky and the White Woman. Snow is falling and fell upon him in those days and on his companions who were with him, on his dwarfs, his clowns, his gimps, it fell, till they were frozen, lost among the dead. The weight oppressed him, and he wept for them. He sang, the tears are endless, and the long sighs issue from my chest. Further out, the hill of many colors, which he sought, portents everywhere, those dark reminders of the road he It ended on the beach. It ended with a hulk of serpents formed into a boat. And when he'd made it, sat in it, and sailed away, a boat that glided on those burning waters, no one knowing when he reached the country of red daylight. It ended on the rim of some great sea. It ended with his face reflected in the mirror of its waves. The beauty of his face returned to him, and he was dressed in garments like the sun. 
It ended with a bonfire on the beach where he would hurl himself and burn his ashes rising in the cries of birds. It ended with the linnet, with the birds of turquoise color, birds of the color of wild sunflowers, red and blue birds. It ended with the birds of yellow feathers in a riot of bright gold, circling till the fire had died out, circling while his heart rose through the sky. It ended with his heart transformed into a star. It ended with the morning star, with dawn and evening. It ended with his journey to death's kingdom, with seven days of darkness, with his body changed to light, a star that burns forever in that sky. And, and he was the one uh, uh, for whom the, uh, the, planet, the, the planet that we call Venus uh, was for them uh, a planet of uh, Quetzalcoatl. So the transformation into the morning, evening, so the star. Uh, you know, but all of it goes with music as well. And uh, uh, I, I was engaged by the end of the 60s into uh, the middle of the 70s uh, in, uh, uh, well, in, in putting together uh, uh, the anthologies, Technicians of the Sacred, uh, and Shaking the Pumpkin, the uh, uh, book of the Indian North Americas. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and then myself uh, engaged in, uh, in, in translation. Uh, so for... Um, <coughs> Uh, sometime, two years, uh, we lived at the Allegheny Seneca Reservation in Western New York State, uh, and I was there, uh, uh, a member of the Cold Spring Longhouse uh, Singing Society. Uh, so, uh, well, let, let me do an English non-sacred version <laughs> of, the, of the sacred Seneca song. You know, English just, you know, takes us something else. <laughs> you know, but it's a, it's a close translation. There aren't many words, there are other sounds, you know, and, and maybe later on I'll, I'll, I'll do a translation that has a lot of, uh, a lot of other sounds. Uh, so this is the, uh, the beginning of the ceremony that they call uh, Shaking the Pumpkin uh, uh, for the uh, Society of the Mystic Animals, as it was called in the literature. The animals are coming in. The animals are coming in.
And th this is a very short poem about this, uh, something that happened. <laughs> called a, a Seneca Memory. At Harry Watts' old place above the Allegheny River, Leo Cooper tells me I could have been the first American Indian rabbi <laughs> were it not for my love of pork. <laughs> uh, so thinking about all of that, <laughs> I wrote a book, a book called The Seneca Journal. Uh, and um, I ended the book of uh, uh, poems called Poland 1931, the attempt to write an ancestral poetry of my own in a world of Jewish mystics, thieves, and madmen, uh, with a poem called Cockboy. And uh, uh, it's a long poem, so I, I, I will just read part one of, of Cockboy. But someday I'm really going to gird up my boys <laughs> and, and read both parts. Um, and um, yeah, there's reference here also to the uh, founder of ecstatic Hasidic Judaism in the 18th century, uh, uh, the one called uh, the Baal Shem, the master of the name or the master of the good name, uh, who uh, like uh, St. Francis and others, goes off into, uh, into wilderness. So, uh, a tale of glory goes into wilderness and where it's there. The, the speech of birds and, uh, and animals. But something else is going on here, too. And so the poem is called Cockboy. And it's uh, called the Cockboy Swamp in a certain way, uh, <clears throat> because there was a poem by uh, uh, the great South American Chilean writer Vicente Odobro, writing in French, uh, you know, that he called, or as it was printed, cockboy, but he meant cowboy, you know, but cockboy. <laughs> so I was haunted by, <laughs> you know, by the Chilean French writing, Odobro, you know, cockboy. Saddle sore I came, a Jew among the Indians. What am I doing in this strange place? <laughs> with these people with strange eyes. Could be it's trouble, could be, could be, he says, a shadow ariseth from his buckwheat, has his tahawk in hand, shadow of an axe inside his right eye, of a fountain pen inside his left. What am I doing here? How was I lost to get here? I'm a hundred men, a hundred fifty different shadows, Jews and Gentiles, who bring the law to wilderness. He says, this man is me, my grandfather, and other men of letters, men with letters carrying the mail, Lithuanian Pony Express riders, the financially crazed Buffalo Bills still riding in the lead, hours before avenging the death of Custer, making the first 3D movie of those wars, or years before it, the numbers vanishing in cabalistic time that brings all men together, and the lonely rider, saddle sore, is me, my grandfather, and other men of letters, Jews and Gentiles entering the domain of Indian who bring the law to wilderness in gold mines and shaky stores, the fur trade, heavy agriculture, ballots, bullets, barbers who threaten my beard, your hair, but patronize me and will make our kind the senator from Arizona, the champion of their law who hates us both but dresses as a Jew one day and in Indian, the next, a little Christian schmuck. What am I doing here? This place is maybe crazy. There's all the letters going backwards, he says. So who can read the signboards in the desert? Who can shake his way out of the woods for its streams? The grandmothers were living near with snakes inside their cunts. Teeth, maybe, maybe chainsaws. When the Baal Shem visited America, he wore a strimal. The locals all thought he was a cowboy, maybe from Mexico. 
A cockboy? No, a cowboy. I will be more than a credit to my community and race, but will search for my brother Esau among these red men. Their nocturnal fires I will share. Piss strain from my holy cock will bear seed of Adonai and feed them visions. I will fill full a clamshell, will pass it around from mouth to mouth. We will watch the moon rise through each other's eyes. The distance is vanishing in cabalistic time, he says. The old man watches from the cliffs a city overcome with light. The man and the city disappear. He looks and sees another city. This one is made of glass. Inside the building stand immobile statues, brown skinned faces catch the light. An elevator moving up and down in the vision of the Kuna Nele, Kuna Shaman. The vision of my grandfather, vision of the Baal Shem in America, the slaves in steerage. What have they seen in common by what light their eyes have opened into stars? I wouldn't know what I was doing here. This place has all the letters going backwards, a reverse in time toward wilderness. The old Jew strains at his gabardine. It parts for him. His spirit rushes up the mountainside and meets an eagle. No. An eagle, captains, <laughs> commanders, darlings, delicious madmen, murderers opening the continent up to exploitation. Cease and desist, he says. Let's speak, he says. Feels like a little gas down here, he says. Can't face the mirror without crying. And the eagle lifts him like an elevator to a safe place above the sunrise. There gives a song to him, the Baal Shem song repeated without words for centuries. Hey, hey, ah, hey, ah, but translates it as yabba, bubba, bubba, bubba. <laughs> when the Baal Shem yabba learns to do a bundle, what is the Baal Shem bubba? Put into the bundle, silk of his prayer shawl bag beneath, cover of beaver skin above, savor of esrog fruit within, horn of a mountain goat between, feather of dove around its sides, clove of a Polish garlic at its heart he wears when traveling in journeys through cabalistic forests, cavalry of the Tsars on every side, men with fat mustaches, yellow eyes and sabers who stalk the gentle soul at night through the Wyoming steppes, he says, what am I doing here? I could not find my head. Would search the countryside on hands and knees until behind a rock in Cody, old Indian steps forth. The prophecies of both join at this point. Like smoke, a pipe is held between them, dribbles through their lips, the keen tobacco. Cowboy? Cockboy, says the Baal Shem places a walnut in his handkerchief and cracks it on a boulder. Each one eats. The Indian draws forth a deck of cards and shuffles. Game, they play at wolves and lambs. The fire crackles in the Pribachuk in a large tent somewhere in America. The story of the coming forth begins. <laughs>